Hi class, it's Mr. Woodbury and today in this video we're going to go over the paired difference test as well as its non-parametric alternative, the Wilcoxon sign rank test. We know this is a paired difference test because we have two uh, sets of data here that are in a one-to-one -one matchup. There's a one-to-one -one dependence. This first set of data, six and eight, those were the same player. That player hit six home runs with the aluminum bat, but eight with the wood bat. The next column, nine and five, that's also for the same player. So these are paired by the player. This is a paired difference test. In step one, we have to identify which way we're gonna subtract, or you can just list which group is gonna be population one. In the claim, the claim is that more are hit with the aluminum bat than the wooden bat. So I'm gonna let aluminum be first. The population one is with the aluminum bat. The null hypothesis is mu sub d equals zero. Now that's assuming that the conditions are met. If the conditions fail here and we have to switch to the alternate test, mu is gonna to change to m for median. And if that's the case, I'll come back and change it at that point. The alternate hypothesis will also compare mu d to zero. And what we really wanna think about here is how the aluminum bat compares to the wooden bat. And in the claim, it said that it's more. So we're gonna say mu sub d is gonna be greater than zero. Step two, the level of significance, that's 0.05. And again, it looks like a paired difference test, but I won't know for sure until I try to do it as a paired difference test. StackCrunch will create a box plot for us that will tell us whether there are any outliers for the differences. And if there are, then we can switch out to the Wilcoxon test at that point. All right, I've already uh, entered the data in StackCrunch that you can use. I'm gonna show you how to find it before we do the problem. So back to my web browser. I'm inside StackCrunch and where it says my StackCrunch, I'm gonna to go to my groups. And the only group that you should have is this one that says Woodbury Math 21. Now I wanna find the data set that's called Zoom Final Review. So where it says uh, search, I'm just gonna type in Zoom and there are two data sets that have that word in it, the midterm review, which I shared with you before, and now this Zoom final review. Click on that and it'll open up in its own screen. And across the top, the column labels list the problem number that it comes from. So problem 11, aluminum and wood are right there. Stat T paired. Remember sample one was the aluminum bat, so I go down to where it says 11 alum. Sample two is the wood bat. If we were checking the conditions in a different way, I would have to save the differences, but here I'm gonna let StackCrunch generate them for me, so uh, nothing to do there. The hypothesis test, we leave the null hypothesis as equal to zero, but remember our alternate was greater than zero that the differences should be positive. In other words, the aluminum bat will hit more home runs than the wooden bat. Sliding down just a little bit to where it says optional graphs and tables, we want the box plot with mean marker. Also to test for normality, I'm gonna highlight Shapiro Wilk. And what this allows me to do is instead of generating my own QQ plot and going to the table, the Shapiro Wilk normality test will tell me whether the differences are normally distributed or not. Click compute. All right. And uh, first, I want to go and take a look at the graph. No outliers, that's a good sign. Back a page to make sure that everything is normally distributed. This p value has to be 0.05 or higher for the data to be considered norm normally distributed. So, uh, the way the Shapiro Wilk test works is we assume they're normally distributed and a p-value that's low will tell us that they're not. Okay, so normally distributed, no outliers for the differences. That means that I can use the paired difference test. The test statistic, 1.84, the p-value, 0.0413. Let me write that down while it's on the screen. And switch back to that screen. Okay, 
Uh, test statistic of 1.84 basically tells us this is about 1.84 standard errors, or what we might think of as standard deviations, higher than we expected to see. And that's borderline unusual. And the p-value reflects that, 0 0.0413. That is below the level of significance. A low p-value tells us to reject HO. So in step five, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. That means there is sufficient evidence to support. And remember in the last video, I told you it's okay to abbreviate it like that. Sufficient, S for sufficient, E for evidence, T for two, S for support. There is sufficient evidence to support that more home runs are hit with the aluminum bat than with a wooden bat. Okay, so we assume that they were the same. When we rejected HO, we're saying that they're not the same, and we were able to conclude that the aluminum bat would, had greater home runs than, or will have greater home runs than the wooden bat. Okay, let's go ahead and try one more. Now this one uh, is gonna fail the condition, but I'm still gonna start off like it was a pair and difference test. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to you on the final is that you think the first one is pair difference and you assume that the second one is the alternate and maybe you get them backwards. If you get the first one wrong, you'll also get the second one wrong. So make sure you check it on each problem, no matter what happens. Tesla believed that sons are taller than their fathers. Uh, student selects 13 fathers who have adult male children, records the height of both the father and son, gets the following data. Tesla claimed that sons are taller than their fathers at the 0.05 level. 0.05 level, we know it's a hypothesis test. This is paired data because these two heights are from the same family. These two heights are from the same family and so on. They're paired together. In step one, population one, I'm gonna let that be sons because in the claim, sons are taller than their fathers. Sons are mentioned first. The null hypothesis, is that the mean difference is equal to zero. The alternate hypothesis, what sign should we use here? Well, we're saying that sons are taller than fathers. That means they have greater height. This is gonna be greater than zero. Now in a moment, when this all goes badly, um, I'm gonna switch these mu's out to m's, m for median. Step two, the level of significance is 0.05. Step three, it appears to be paired difference. In a moment, when we find out that it's not, I'm gonna come back and cross that off and replace it with Will Coxon. All right, for the calculations, let's go to StackCrunch. Again, the data have already been loaded in that data sheet. They're in columns 12 father and 12 son. Now remember, I decided that son was gonna be first, so I have to make sure I pick them in the right order. Stat. T stats, one sample, I'm sorry, paired. Sample one was son, sample two was father. We're gonna say that it's equal to zero versus greater than zero. And down here for optional graphs and tables, again, I'm gonna select box plot and Shapiro will. Now the reason I don't select QQ plot is that here it doesn't generate the correlation statistic that we want. So I'd have to go outside and make another one anyway. So this is one-stop shopping, which I prefer here. Click on compute and the p-value is large enough to consider it normal. But when I go to the next screen, there is an outlier right here. Row nine, that difference was um, 7.9 inches. That son was 7.9 inches taller than his father. That was an outlier for the set of data. That means that I can't do it as a paired difference test. So I'm gonna throw this away and I'm gonna start over. Stats, non-parametrics, Will Coxon sign ranks. I need to switch to where it says paired. Sample one, son. Sample two, father. Equals zero for the null hypothesis. And for H1, the median is gonna be greater than zero. Again, notice that it says median there, not mean. Compute. 
and there are the results. The p-value, which is all we need here, is 0.3633. Let me jot that down while I remember it. P-value equals 0.3633. And now I've got a little editing to do. Uh, first, it's not a pair difference test. Now it's the Wilcoxon sign ranks test. And you can just write Wilcoxon. That's good enough for us. Uh, the null hypothesis is M sub D equals zero. And H1, M sub D is greater than zero. Now we can finish the problem. The p-value is too high compared to the level of significance. So we fail to reject HO. And when we write the conclusion, we would replace the word mean with median. But here, I think we can write it without using that word anyway. There is not sufficient evidence to support that sons are taller than their fathers. So we didn't have strong enough evidence to get rid of the belief that the median heights were the same. And so we were not able to prove that or support that the median heights for sons are greater than the median heights for fathers. That's the end of this video. In the next video, we'll move on to the two mean tests.